Hi and welcome back to Engine Shop Joe. I want to say thanks to everybody that subscribes and comments on the channel. Uh, this information is for you uh, so that you can uh, be more effective at troubleshooting and if you own machines you can make better decisions on uh, what needs to be done or if someone gives you a quote you can look through it and it'll make a little more sense. I think that's an important thing. So today we're going to look at uh, what do you do when you get an ECM image and you open the fault screen and you're scrolling and you're scrolling and you're scrolling and there's a lot of faults in there. And uh, where do you start? How do you know where to start? What do you worry about? What do you not worry about? So let's take a look. This is a little B67 in a crane. Uh, those engines in off-road machines will regen between 25 and 35 or 40 hours between each uh, after treatment regen if they've got a particulate filter. And uh, this one was on the mark at about 25. So let's take a look and see what we've got. So here we're going to take a look at the after treatment history. And on the right, we can see our diesel particulate filter differential pressure. Uh, just recently was up as, at 2.5, but below that it was down in the low twos or the high ones. And that's really good. That's what I'd call normal. And this does have some hours on the filter, so it's uh, not like it's a new filter. There is ash in it. On the left, you can see that uh, engine key on time is 7,000 hours. And believe it or not, uh, they told me that this is the original filter in it yet. So this engine's running really clean, and the machine probably works at a decent duty cycle all the time with not much idling. So anyway, uh, after treatment history is not a problem. Regenning is not a problem, so let's move on to the next screen. So here's our fault list. There's quite a few of them. Remember the ones in yellow are are flagged for us because it's the most recent fault in the list. And it happened 47 minutes ago. And you can see there's 12 counts on the VGT actuator circuit abnormal update rate. That means that it is not communicating back to the ECM when it's supposed to. It's going on vacation when it's supposed to be communicating. And then right below that, we've got fault 5177, nine counts. And it's saying that the VGT software is not responding when it's being prompted to. So uh, bottom line is the VGT is going to have to be replaced on this. Not sure why those things are happening. It could be because it got uh, overheated. Remember the VGT sits on a turbo and that gets very hot. That's why they're water cooled. There are a few that are not water cooled. That'd be the lower horsepower engines. This one happens to be water cooled. So uh, when I see this, if there's no software updates that address those two faults and the wiring checks out and the data bus checks out, we change the VGT and it, it fixes it up every time, uh, the VGT motor. So next we've got uh, fault code 1713, 31 counts. After treatment one, diesel exhaust fluid tank heater. Don't let that one, numeral one, um, shake you. On some of the big horsepower engines, the big Vs, They'll have two after treatment systems, after treatment one, after treatment two. So uh, in some instances, you'll see one, two, three, even four, depending what they're talking about. And they just happen to use one here. There is only one. So it's on the tank heater and it says data is valid above normal operating range, moderately severe. So when we're talking about the tank heater. It's talking about temperature here. So the fault is insinuating that uh, it's the tank heater is not supposed to be heating the tank up and the tank is being heated. So it's faulting the uh, tank heater. So then after that, we've got after treatment one diesel exhaust fluid quality abnormal rate of change. So the quality sensor has stopped communicating. Well, we all know there was a lot of problems with those floats, but this is a little different because the if you look to the right, the tank temperature started problems started way before the rate of change. And so um, I suspect there's a problem with the, with the device that controls tank temperature, but we'll see. So we move on down. Wheelbase speed, 
look to the right at the hours. There are 300 hours, the next one's 300, then 380, uh, then 59, the torque D rate. Remember, torque D rates are not a problem in and of themselves. They are there because of another problem that affects the after treatment system or the engines, uh, engine being severely damaged. So then we've got coolant level, moderately, severely low. Uh, again, another fault for that, different fault code. And those, those fault codes are different because they can mean one's mildly low, the other one's moderately low, the next one's severely low. And then we've got a fall on a knock sensor, but it's 650 hours old. I'm not going to worry about it. And unless we have battery voltage faults uh, that are active, I don't worry about power supply loss, that 1117. So in the next slide, I've outlined what I'm going to take a look at and why. I already talked to you about the VGT drivers and 1713, the out-treatment diesel tank fluid heater. Those are the two faults on this we need to address. In blue, I've got 3714, and I've got that circled because that is related to the fault circled in red and the one in green. Now on the right, all the tan blocks are times that are related and then the two purple blocks are times that are related. And you can see a couple of them overlap. The 3714 was driven by both 1894 fault and 5177 fault, as well as the 4277 fault. So uh, this kind of helps you to pick out what you're going to look at. Those other faults, remember, if the timestamp's really old, don't worry about them. The fluid quality I'm worried about because I want to take a look and see what was in the snapshot at 4277 because of that 1713. So here's our 4277 snapshot and look at the temperature of the diesel exhaust fluid tank. It's 149 degrees. So the sensors were being overheated, the electronics were being overheated and they started to lose their ability to be accurate. And you can see the tank level is 34, but the temperature was 149. So we replaced the valve. And our friend Steve, who comments on the channel, had mentioned that the valves will collect uh, the dirt from the cooling, from the coolant in the cooling system. It kind of collects under where that valve seats and doesn't let it seat properly. And so we took this valve apart just to take a look, and it was full of scale and and uh, rust and debris. And that's what the problem was. Um, we did replace the valve and we had them flush the cooling system and put in fresh coolant. And hopefully that takes care of it and the machine's back up and running. So uh, thanks for joining me on Engine Shop Joe. We'll see you next time.